In my last video, I walked you through my lighting bag and my modifier bag. This video is about my camera bags. Now, I started that last lighting video with the Vivitar 285, the lighting bit of kit that got me started 14 years ago again. This is the Nikon D100. And this is the camera that my friend Mark Climey bought me to second shoot weddings with him 14 years ago. This six megapixel beast is why I'm a photographer today. And I keep this thing around to remind myself of that, that it's, that it's not always about chasing the gear and it's, it's not always about what's in this bag. Um, I'm grateful for this camera. I'm grateful for all of the little cameras and big cameras and everything that I've had. And I'm very grateful for the system that I'm using today uh, in my life. But I keep this around again to just remind myself that be about the craft and be about the photography more than be about the gear. But of course we can't do the craft and the photography without the gear. So let's get into the gear. Starting with the bags, these are the two bags I typically take with me when I'm going on location or traveling with my gear. This is the Think Tank Airport International version 3. And the reason I got the version 3, I recently upgraded to this, is because they have now changed this front pocket to accommodate up to a 15 inch laptop and an, a tablet sleeve in here. And that let me go to a slightly smaller shoulder bag uh, to take with me since my shoulder bag did not have to also carry my laptop. So I've got the Think Tank Airport International version 3. Open this up and this is my main camera. This is the most ridiculous camera I have ever owned in my life. It is the Phase 1 XF100 camera. Uh, let me put that over here. I've been shooting a phase one medium format camera for about six years now. I had the IQ 140 back with the phase one DF plus body. And that DF plus body, frankly, was such a piece of shit. I hated that camera body. It's probably the worst camera body I ever owned. And so when the new XF body came out, I knew it was time to upgrade. And I wasn't quite sure if I was going to upgrade the back as well. But I had my eyes set on the XF50, the, the 50 megapixel back, whichever one that is, the IQ350 something. And I went into capture integration to do some horse trading and to get into the new system. And Dave over at capture integration said, Zach, I want you to try the 100 megapixel full frame back, the XF100. And I was like, no, Dave, I don't want to pay out that much money. And I don't need 100 megapixels. That's completely ridiculous. 50 megapixels is completely fine for what I need. And he just said, Zach, try it. Try it for a week. And uh, if you want the 50 megapixel back, come back and get it. I called him the next day and I said, I'll take the 100. Um, it is absolutely the greatest camera I've ever shot with. Now, as far as features or speed or, or auto focus ability or any of that, it's not that kind of greatest camera, but image quality and sharpness and dynamic range and highlight recovery. Uh, this camera does things that no other camera I have used or I have seen on the market does. Now, I know it's a ridiculous camera. It's ridiculously expensive. It's big, it's heavy. It's slow. It is the complete opposite of why I love the Fuji system, which is lightweight and fast and nimble. But the vast majority of the work I do is portraiture, which is typically in some sort of controlled environment uh, where I can slow down and just work with my subjects. It's not a run and gun kind of situation. So the phase one works perfectly for me for that. And the image quality is second to none. All right, enough about the phase one. Maybe I'll make a post about that specifically in the future if you would like. If you want more info on this, I'll do it. All right, just let me know in the comments. So for the phase, I have a 55 millimeter leaf shutter lens uh, that's bolted onto the front now. I have an older, 
120 millimeter macro, this is not leaf shutter, so that limits me to 125th of a second uh, shutter speed on the phase. Uh, the leaf shutters will go up to 2,000th of a second. Um, so I've got the 120 millimeter macro. I have the 80 millimeter 2.8 leaf shutter here. And down in here, I have the 35 millimeter, also not leaf shutter. It is autofocus. And this is the one lens I eventually want to replace. I would like to replace it with the 35 millimeter leaf shutter lens, but that lens costs over $6,000. So it's gonna be a minute until I get that. I mean, that one lens alone could almost get me into the Fuji GFX system, which I'll talk about in a second. So my phase one has four lenses. I've got the 35, 55, 80, and a 120 macro. My other main camera, which in kind of humorous way is a backup to my phase, because I can only afford to have one of those, is the Fuji X-Pro2. The X-Pro2 is my favorite Fuji interchangeable lens camera that is out now. The X-T2 is great. And I think the one primary thing that I like over, uh, about the X-T2 over the X-Pro2 is that you can tether with an X-T2. You can't tether with the X-Pro2 unless they do some sort of firmware update. If I'm tethering, I'm shooting with this beast. So tethering really doesn't matter to me uh, for my small camera. I love the size. I love the form. I love the function. I shot with the X-T1 for a long time because it was basically a stopgap until this camera came out. I prefer, just personally, the X-Pro2 over the X-T2. And it's mainly just kind of a design and feel and, and the form of it. I mean, the functions are nearly identical. They have the same sensor and same guts and they do much of the same thing. But I look at this camera and I just, I, I love this camera so much. So it usually has the 23 millimeter 1.4 bolted onto that. And down in here, I keep the 27 millimeter pancake, just in case I want just a really tiny package to go walk around with. I'll keep that pancake around. I have the 56 millimeter 1.2, um, just a very sharp, very fast, a uh, very nice lens if I'm needing to pull off a quick portrait or something with the X-Pro. And a lot of times I'm sort of just running and gunning with my X-Pro 2. So um, I keep two zoom lenses with me so I can just put one lens on the body and kind of cover whatever's happening in front of me um, with multiple focal lengths on one lens. And I have the 16 to 55 2.8. Um, you know, for me, this is a refrigerator lens. Uh, I call it a refrigerator lens because it's something you don't really get excited about. When's the last time you got excited about your refrigerator, right? You don't really care about your refrigerator. It's just this big thing sits in your kitchen. You only care about it when it doesn't work. Um, the 16 to 55 2 8, it's a good lens. It's fast. It's, it's quick to focus. And, but it's kind of awkward on this body. And I just simply use it as an appliance. Um, it doesn't get me excited, but it just is what it is. So it's a good lens. I just don't get super excited about it. It's not something I use in any sort of personal work. I don't go, ooh, I want my 16 to 55. It's just simply a work lens. I do love this zoom though. This is the 10 to 24. And the 10 millimeter on this is beautiful. Um, I love how wide this lens goes. The optical image stabilization is great. So I always keep this around. Also in my bag is my forever favorite camera that I've ever owned is the Fuji X100T. Now I haven't upgraded to the F yet. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to upgrade as finances allow for one reason. And that one reason is this. So I can get rid of these damn little batteries. The new X100F has the same battery as the X-Pro2. And that would just make life, again, simpler and cleaner and easier for me if both of these cameras are running the same battery and can use the same charger 
and batteries can swap in and out between each other. That is my number one reason that I will be upgrading this camera soon. But, but this is still my desert island. If this studio was on fire and I could only save one camera, it is this, the Fuji X100. That, seriously, it is the most favorite camera I've ever owned. I keep it uh, kind of paired up with this spider uh, holster, Black Widow, that can go there on your belt and you feel like Clint Eastwood. So if I'm running around set, I'll usually have this clip to me and it's always at hand. I use a lot of Think Tank products. This is the Cable Management 10 version two. It holds all of my batteries for the phase one kit. Um, I do carry the 50 millimeter converter and the 28 millimeter converter lenses for the X100. Those are down in here. I have these little DSLR battery holders from Think Tank uh, for X100 batteries. This one will hold four X100 batteries, two X Pro batteries. Those are in here. My Fotix Stratos 2 triggers are usually living right here in this little corner of my bag. Let me put this stuff away. My Phase 1 uses CF cards, so I use a Think Tank Pixel Pocket Rocket uh, CF for that. The other ones are SD cards, so I use the other Think Tank SD card holder for that. And this has been a fantastic addition to my bag. It is a Transcend Thunderbolt external hard drive. This one is two terabytes. At the end of the shoot, I wanna back everything up that I've been tethering to my computer onto another drive. So I immediately have a second copy. And this thing at 100 megapixels is a beast. So I have gigs and gigs of information after a shoot. So backing up to USB 3 would sometimes be 20 or 30 minutes to back up a shoot. So I start the backup at the end of the shoot. I'm finishing packing up all my gear, keeping an eye on my laptop to make sure it's still copying and everything's going well. And there are times that I'm all packed up, I'm ready to go, and I'm just waiting for the copy to finish. So I went with Thunderbolt, and now it's like five to seven minutes for a shoot. I start the backup, I start packing, and when I'm packed, that's finished, everything goes in the bag, and I get to go home. Other little things that I have in here are miscellaneous, like AAA batteries, uh, some backup cables, a USB 3 cable. I have a compact flash card reader in here. I have the plates to uh, the back and the camera body in case I need to take it apart for any reason. Um, that's the most of it. Oh, I also do carry, this is important, the X-Rite color checker. I always have this on shoots. Um, I'll take a picture of the swatches and then a picture of just this target as well. Typically, I'll just have both of those. And then that helps me get color under control later when I'm in post-production. Um, this is the best little color checker thing that I've ever used. And I always keep that in there. That's my roller bag. My next bag that I typically have with me on location is the Urban Disguise 40 version two. I'll put my headphones in here. I'll uh, put my Fotix Indra batteries in this bag, my laptop charging cable, just your various odds and ends and sunglasses and stuff that don't fit in pockets. That all goes in this bag because it easily fits underneath any airplane seat that I'm on. Uh, the international goes overhead. You know, there is one little thing that I do love traveling with and it's this little tiny JBL Bluetooth speaker. And I end up always taking this with me. If I'm feeling ultimate hipster and going out on a date night or something like that, I might take my own a bag because it's beautiful. But that's usually just like when I'm just traveling personally and I'm not taking all of this crap with me, I'll throw an X100 and my Instax printer in this. And this will usually be my travel bag. But for work, it's typically these two bags right here. 
I started this process of simplifying my gear by mapping it out on paper of listing all of the main stuff that I use all the time. I was always going out on location, kind of shifting my bags around or packing things into another bag or I'd build this kind of bag for that kind of shoot, but then I'd kind of build this kind of bag for a different kind of shoot. And it was simply becoming a lot of noise in my head. Um, it was just too much stress. I wanted a bag of lights and a bag of cameras. And I am at that point now. I have my bag of lights and I'm pretty certain that my bag of lights is finished and complete. I don't feel that there's anything that can come out of that bag and I don't feel that there's anything that needs to be added to that bag. My bag of cameras though I'm not so sure about because of the Fuji GFX. The Fuji GFX is an amazing camera. I got to shoot with it for about five days once it was the pre-production models were released out into the world. And while it's not a phase one, it's really close to a phase one, more so than any Canon or Nikon or Sony that I've ever shot. Um, it is a beautiful camera and I call it medium format to go. This thing likes to live on a tripod or on a stand and I will shoot with it handheld run and gun, um, especially with the new XF body, the old DF body. I, I, I didn't like doing run and gun with it. I will with this, but that GFX uh, handles like a DSLR and gets me really close to this quality and would be the perfect backup camera to this. Um, but then I have my X pro two and I've considered selling all my Fuji gear, except the X100, of course, sell all my Fuji gear, all my lenses, all my stuff, and get a GFX and put that in this bag. And then I would have the phase and I would have the GFX. And if I got a lens adapter and put that on there, then, but that's a 2X lens crop. So I'd still buy a Fuji lens and I'm still dealing with two systems and two batteries and, and all of that. And then I thought, what if I sold this? What if I got rid of my beloved phase and I could go buy all the GFX gear that I wanted at that point? But I'm not getting rid of this thing anytime soon. Um, this camera is unbelievable. And the, the GFX, well, it gets into this neighborhood. It doesn't get to this address. So there's a possibility that I may sell some gear off and get the GFX. I am not sponsored by any of these companies. Um, I am not paid by any of these companies. And as you can see, I am thinking of purchasing a GFX. They don't just give me one or anything like that. Um, so that's my bag right now. Um, it's wonderful to just have one bag packed with what I need, whatever I have to do has to happen with this gear or it just doesn't happen. And I think my one caveat to that is I kept my 50 to 140 Fuji lens and it sits in a drawer over there here in my studio. Uh, and that is only pulled out for specific jobs um, where I know I'm going to need the reach that the 140 gives me that none of these other lenses will give me. So that sits over there, but I don't ever rarely travel with it, um, but I do have that lens. That's my camera bag. Uh, you've seen my lighting bag. That's the main part of the gear uh, that I'm using. I think one of the next videos that will be coming up will be a studio tour. I finally have gotten this studio uh, in shape and I finally have gotten my brain in shape and it feels awesome to be making content again and uh, thank you so much for all the comments and everything on my lighting video uh, I'm going to keep them coming so we've got uh, this one done I think I'll do a studio tour and that mag mod video will be coming up as well thank you again everyone thanks for watching and we'll see you later
I got this studio stand for 200 bucks at Wings Camera. So great, Dan picked it up. All right, we out. <laughs>